Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another shave. It is good to be back, and today I'm gonna to continue my trend of trying new things. Now, I've been at this hobby nearly four years, most of you know that, and I've seen artisans come and go, I've seen new artisans arrive on the scene, and I've tried a lot of different things, and there was a good couple years where I was trying almost everything in sight. And so, over the last few years, I've kind of scaled it down to four or five artisans that are my go-tos, and I typically try not to deviate from those folks just to keep me from going down the rabbit hole and buying everything in sight. And so uh, that works to some degree, but as I've been working on this channel and being able to provide content to you good folks, I've got to venture out and try new things. And there's such a influx of new artisans that are stepping it up, that are adding something that somebody else isn't doing, that are you know just basically contributing to the community in a way that hasn't been contributed to before. All these different things are coming up and it's just so tantalizing to just try to venture out and try something new. A lot of good folks out there, a lot of good artisans, and it's hard just to kind of stay within your the confines of the small little world that I've created for myself. And I created that world for good reason uh, because I got into a lot of trouble with just buying product left and right. And so uh, today I'm gonna continue with that trend. I'm gonna go with Central Texas Soaps. Uh, this is a soap out of Brady, Texas. Uh, it's new to me. We have a couple of uh, review videos um, on the West Coast Shaving Channel for the soap. And I think they arrived on the scene this past year and they were most popular for the Mr. Pepper scent, which was a play on the Dr. Pepper fragrance from the soda. Um, I smelled it, I think it smells good. It smells more like a cinnamon bear to me. Um, but if you kind of close your eyes and get a couple of whiffs, you do get those hints of Dr. Pepper. And so it kind of was new and folks liked it. And uh, I was at the store a couple of weeks ago and just kind of smelling different things, looking for something different to review. And I smelled this. The minute I smelled this, I absolutely fell in love with it. Now this reminds me of another soap. Uh, it is a sandalwood scent. It does remind me of another fougere scent, um, almost identical actually, um, but the fragrance is so unbelievably good. And the minute I smelled it, I was like, I want this soap. And so I picked it up. So Greg Smith is the artisan out of Brady, Texas. If you go to his site, he talks about how um, he suffers from eczema, him and his son actually. And he finds that, uh, he found over the course of his life that natural soaps provide a much better experience than uh, mass-produced store-bought soaps do. And so he started down the rabbit hole of making soaps. He enjoyed it so much that uh, he started to sell his own soaps and then uh, got into, you know, naturally a lot of soap makers get into wet shaving because of the soap making process. And so that's what happened to him. Um, he said and researched it and found that dermatologists uh, do recommend a single blade razor for shaves uh, just for a better experience on your skin. And so he does that uh, for those reasons. And he says also on his site that he also has a history of irritation and just really bad results from traditional cartridge razor shaving. And so he moved into wet shaving for those reasons, fell in love with bar soap making, then fell in love with wet shaving soap making. And so I'm glad he has because um, this is not my first use with this soap. It's my second use. And I have to tell you that this soap is one outstanding performer. When I bought it, I thought it was a tallow-based soap. It's not a tallow-based soap. It is a vegan formula, but it is one amazing vegan formula. And as you can tell, um, I've given my thoughts on both uh, the vegan and the tallow myths and then the fusion together. And I gotta tell you that um, my mind is changing constantly in this hobby. I, I think one thing and then something else happens to change my mind. And I can tell you that I have tried some very solid vegan bases that will contend with any tallow base and vice versa. So anyway, that's what we're gonna go with today. Um, the scent is absolutely amazing. I'm gonna go with my West Coast Shaving Brush just because I think it goes well with the theme. It's a nice five ounce puck. That's the other thing, you get five ounces as opposed to four. And then I've got my Above the Tie M1 Windsor Handle with a Pulse Silver, my new favorite marriage. Uh, I have not been able to stop using this razor. Um, and since I found the Pulse Silver Blade and discovered how much I loved it, um, I've been nonstop with those two. In fact, I went to West Coast Shaving a few weeks ago. When I bought these, came back a few days later and bought more Pulse Silvers. And so, uh, anyways, the romance continues. All right, let me go ahead and uh, load the soap up. Almost forgot what I was doing there for a second. Just wanna rinse the brush out real quick. Soap's been blooming. Anyway, I just think it's pretty good to provide some backstory to some of these things. So I spent a few minutes doing that, but as you know, I've gotten much quicker and more efficient at my loading process. So I'm excited about that. 
just to keep the video moving. So my last video was 24 minutes, which is good. I'm hoping to get this video in less time. So if you've ever smelled La Terra Vert by Katie's Bubbles, this soap smells strikingly similar to that. And that was one of my favorite fragrances by Katie's Bubbles. And when I smelled this, this one might be a little bit different. I gotta smell them both side by side. But it's not your typical sandalwood, this one. It's not that sandalwood that jumps out and smacks you in the face like an Art of Shaving or the fine accoutrements version of that uh, fragrance. Um, other sandalwoods that really have that staunch sandalwood or that woody scent to it, this really isn't like that. It, there is an element of earthiness to this, but it's more of a fougere-like sandalwood. And it's very unique, not your typical sandalwood. It's very pleasant. The minute I smelled it, I was in love with it. I was like, I gotta get this soap. Um, he's got another one out there that's a play on Mountain Dew, which smells really nice. I wanna get that one. And then he's got a cherry pipe tobacco scent, which smells amazing as well. I wanna get that one too. And so a lot of folks were clamoring over the Dr. Pepper. I got it, it smells nice, but to me it smells more like a candy cinnamon bear than Dr. Pepper. So um, I'm not big on cinnamon scents. So a lot of folks like Mr. Pepper. I think that's plenty. But man, the creaminess on the soap is outstanding. Um, so let's see. Got a good amount of growth today. This West Coast shaving knot is really easy to work with. Loads easily, has decent backbone with a little bit of floppiness. Sometimes I say things that appear to be dualities, but you just gotta experience it to know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't picked up this brush, West Coast Shaving is moving right along. And uh, you know they came up with those infinity brushes recently, which are pretty neat. I wanna get one of those. And uh, this brush, this release was really great when it came out. Man, this fragrance is just intoxicating. It's probably about a six or a seven on the scent strength scale. And it's just really nice. It smells really, really good. It just has a really pleasant, or it's like I said, like an earthy fougere more than a sandalwood to me. But, um, and that's just me because I've had experience with a lot of different sandalwoods and they're typically very powerful and overtaking. And this one's not, it's more subdued. So the minute I smelled it, and I like sandalwood, and like compared to like Tob sandalwood, my goodness, that one like smacks you right in the face the minute you open the cap. Now because my stopper is not working and I haven't gotten around to fixing it yet, I got my fine accoutrements full. Thank you, Thor, for that idea. Filled up with water right here so I can dip it right in and not just keep the tap water running or have to keep turning it on. Plus I like the water warm, which means I have to use both hands to turn on both nozzles. And uh, this just makes it a little more simpler. Go right to the bowl. The other day when I was shaving with this, so this is with a synthetic knot, which is really good at holding hydration and dispensing it. So the last time I used a newborn knot that I have that I'll feature one day on this on one of these videos, but um, it's a much different type of a uh, build as far as the lather goes. And you'll find that you'll get that sometimes with some of the different knots that you use. Now this is building pretty good. I don't like to waste that because it's nice and voluminous. And I'll usually swirl these days just a couple of times on my face. And then I'll just start painting the water in after that. Once I've got a good foundation going, you can build the lather up pretty good. But this soap takes quite a bit of water without any animal fat in it. And look at the build on it. It's excellent. It's slick. It's voluminous. It's dense. It's everything that you know that I like from previous videos. Look at that lather. It's coming out beautifully. It's nice and creamy. Everything we've come to expect these days. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. And I think we're done, folks. Eric can move into his shave. 
and no more 30 minute videos. Here we go. Highly recommend this scent, highly recommend this base. And like I said, I'm this year, I've discovered some new players that I've just absolutely fallen in love with as far as the soap bases go. And so it makes this hobby great. It's always something new coming out. People improving, uh, like the other day I used Mammoth and I mean, who would have thought a tallow and duck bat fusion. So you owe it to yourself. Try these things out. Maybe you'll find one that you like. And, and it's just me, I kind of have that uh, Costco complex where if I like one, I try to get them all. And that used to be my thought process. I try not to do that anymore. So there's a few I've identified that I like, and then there's some artisans where I just can't stop buying them. So there's that. You literally almost cannot feel the blade. Soap is super slick. The creaminess is pretty amazing to me. It's like Cool Whip. And this razor sings like a bird. And I love that. The audible component. You know, it's like why NASCAR people like, you know, loud engines. I know shaving's not NASCAR, but you know, you get the idea. So yeah, interesting reading the write-up on the website. Um, both the soap maker and his son, they both have eczema, which you know is basically a condition that leads to rashy, dry skin. And so I'm sure the type of soaps that they use, they, there's certainly probably elements that can aggravate that condition and definitely dry store-bought soaps. Even for me, with my bath soaps, um, I prefer bar soap over body wash. Um, but I'm very selective on the soaps that I use. I usually try to use soaps that I know are, they cost a little bit more, but they're more hydrating. Um, they're more replenishing, they're more cleansing, um, and not just the ones that are, you know, they just kind of get that soap scum on them. They make your skin real dry. And, you know, I don't know. Even the ones that kind of get like rough on your skin as you're just trying to rub the bar around. And I find that ladies bar soaps do that better than men's. Now Dove Men Plus Care is a little bit better because it's made by Dove. Probably one of the best men's bar soaps. But still. Ladies uh, bar soaps typically have a lot more vitamins and just more nourishing properties than men's bar soaps do. Yeah, this soap is absolutely fantastic. I can feel, the other thing too, is when I'm going between passes and I'm rubbing water around my face, you can feel the slickness that's created by the soap or lack thereof. This one has a tremendous amount of slickness all over my hand. So I could tell that even if, if I didn't apply any more lather right now, there's still a ton of residual, look at that. There's a ton of residual slickness I could use without having to reapply lather. But because I've got a ton, I'm gonna do it. And the soap is just great. So this fragrance is great. I did a live video with this, my first shave, and the lather I got from the Bornot was just insane. But again, I find that synthetics hold a tremendous amount of hydration and dispense it well. And that's the issue I have with Badger is that it holds a ton of hydration and then just keeps it. These days, I'm really enjoying Bore and Synthetic primarily but mostly bore these days. Especially with a few more bore knots that I picked up. So 
I picked up that Ibate Ila Mantilla through West Coast Shaving, which was fantastic. That's a, to me, a premium bore because of the cost. And then I also picked up a Thater bore, which is insane. I'll feature that in one of my videos coming up. But that has been my new go-to brush. And this razor is the best against my neck. But again, your mileage may vary. I've talked to folks that have had adverse reactions to above the tie razors. And then there's your class of individuals that just love, aggr I hate aggressive razors. I don't get it. I can't stand them. All you can feel is the blade and I'm sitting there all trying not to cut myself. And But some folks, they're just good with it. They're just, you know, we look at some of the other daily shavers we have that just love aggressive razors. They know how to harness them. And then look at our folks that got into straight razor shaving. And that's all they do and they love it. I, I did that video with Kai and I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. A straight razor shaving was fun, but the maintenance involved and the money involved in it, I'll pass. However, it was fun to do that video. And I'd never straight razor shaved before, so this channel gave me the opportunity to do that, and I was excited. It was fun, it was a fun experience. And like I said, I did enjoy the shave. It's just not for me. So the slickness is definitely a highlight of the soap, for sure. Performance is great. It's everything that you expect from a high quality shave. When you're spending 14 to 17 bucks for a tub of soaps, that's a premium shave, in my opinion. Especially when I used to, you know, on sale, get a can for $2.99. You know, Edge or whatever the case may be. Gillette. How are we doing on time? 17 minutes. So I gave you an idea of some of the other soaps that are on their site. West Coast Shaving, I think, carries almost all of them. The newer ones, I believe, are this one and the Mountain Dew fragrance. That Mountain Dew fragrance is nice. And I love citrusy scents. So that's on my radar. But this is my second shave with this soap. I'm absolutely impressed with it. This razor has also been the best for my mustache area. It's very maneuverable, very mild, it's very efficient. So it doesn't sacrifice efficiency because of the mildness. That's the good part. And that's always my trouble area. is my mustache. And you can see all the different swirling angles I have to come in on it because it's just the way the hair is growing. I can't just get it where your traditional up, down, side. I've got to kind of do all these weird angles. So that's what's left. Gonna do my cleanup. Ton of, look at that creaminess. Oh my gosh. Well done, Central Texas. You know, it, this has been the cool part about this hobby is, is all these folks arrive on the scene 
they're all learning from their predecessors. They're all learning what the, uh, I mean, I think they kind of research what folks are liking, what the trends are, and they either try to mimic that, improve on it, put their own spin on it. But I mean, look at the creaminess, look at the sheen on that. I mean, fantastic. Love that double chin, courtesy of Paul H. Now, I was a little bit behind on my comments from my last video, the one I did on Mammoth. And there's a gentleman on there that comments every single time. And uh, I appreciate all of you guys that watch the videos, especially those of you that make it past the uh, 10 minute marker. Um, and listen to my incessant banter. But um, he comments all the time and he has one of these razors and I was responding to some of the comments last night and one of the comments I made to him about above the tie is there's blades I've used in this that I don't, I don't remember enjoying as much with other razors. And so the comment I made to him because he has an above the tie but a different head, he has the R head, I have the M. And the comment I made to him is that this razor appears to improve the equality and efficiency of the blades that I use. So in other words, it makes the blades better than it does um, in uses with other razors. And so that's been my experience with it. So now it's trouble for me because I can't just, I'm not gonna just buy cheap razors anymore. Never again, I mean, this is the standard now for me. That's the trouble. When you try something like this, you fall in love with it. Same thing with brushes. I mean, uh, my mind is totally blown on some of the recent brushes I've purchased that were higher end. And it's like, it's worth buying those. I don't have to buy as many, but they're worth having and they're worth paying the additional money for. All right, great shave. No fuss, no muss. Central Texas, wonderful job. Great soaps. And again, go through the artisans that you see and I, I, you know, for me, I'm a bit spoiled. I have a shop here where I can go in and smell stuff. That's not always the case for those of you that have to, you know, buy online only. Or what's good too is some of the stores for a very affordable price. I believe West Coast Shaving does this. It allows you to buy bags of samples that you can smell and test and you know, it's the next best thing to being at the store. So I'm blessed in that West Coast shaving again, like 20 minutes from me, literally. With no traffic, I might be able to get there in 15. And I get to go in there and smell everything, so I'm spoiled. But great shave, nice and smooth. Love that razor. They do make matching splashes in these really nice blue bottles. And I love that. This soap fragrance is just off the hook. Again, it was love at first whiff. Mm, smells so good. Now, this splash seems to be a little bit subdued as far as alcohol content goes. There's no stingingness to it. There's none of that, um, just that intensity like that you get with an alcohol splash. So I think it's really, really mild and really subdued on the alcohol content. You do get a little bit of tinginess, but it's definitely got a lot of skin nourishing properties. So looking at it, aloe leaf juice, witch hazel, uh, white willow bark, glycerin, tea tree oil, which is a natural disinfectant. There's a couple other you know properties in here, but those are the more natural properties. And so it's good. Feels good, my face feels great. Post shave is good. Slickness was great, performance was great. You know, what do you continue to say about these soaps? I try to find a highlight for each soap. This one was probably the slickness. Just really, really good, really good slickness. And that to me too contributes to less cuts and for a smoother shave. And so anyway, Central Texas Sandalwood, if you haven't given them a shot, try this fragrance or try another one. Really excellent soap base. Um, above the tie, Windsor with an M1 Pulse Silver. West Coast Shaving Synthetic Brush with a nice coin on the bottom. 24 minutes, I'm getting better folks. Have a blessed day, God bless you all. See you next time.